Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Guns For Hire and welcome to The Gun Shop here on You Always Win. On today's show, we're gonna be talking about a new console being announced by Google and Asus, as well as an eSports league. Sony has announced an eSports league coming to the PlayStation 4. And our last article is causing quite a stir in the gaming community. Polish developer created a game called Hatred. And, you know, true to its name, some of you like it, some of you don't mind it, and some of you absolutely hate it. Available for pre-order on October 17th and hitting store shelves on November 3rd, the Google Nexus Player will be debuting in partnership with Asus. Now, I believe it's going to be $99, and the gamepad, I don't know why, I don't know if it comes with a gamepad or just a controller. The controller looks kind of like, I guess, closer to an Xbox 360 controller, but the analog sticks are symmetrical like they are with the PlayStation, so maybe they thought, well, let's take the good you know, pieces of this and we'll create this. It's like a Frankenstein. I don't know. Maybe both parties will hate it. To me, I am a little skeptical. And you know what? I absolutely love Asus. I'm not trying to say this is bad publicity. I'm just giving my opinion. I'm a little bit skeptical on the potential success of this. And, and I love Google. Heck, Google owns YouTube. YouTube is the reason why you know, I have such an amazing life. I don't you know, hate or dislike at all either company, not even remotely. But is there a need for another one of these? It's like an Android supported. Now you can sync up all your games across all devices. So I'm assuming that the games that are going to be available on this Google Nexus player are going to be like mobile games, which, you know, arguably have come a long way. And the graphics and, and the playability and, and how you actually control them, let's face it, they're getting better and better because our phones and our technology and the iPads and everything else and the peripherals that we use with them is getting better as well. I'm just not sure about the potential success of another console. I get it that it's, you know, it's not the same. It's not playing these, uh, at least not that I'm aware of these AAA titles, unless I'll, it's gonna be uh, able to sink into Steam and everything like that. Then maybe, yeah, but I mean, we've seen those other things. When is the Steam box coming out, by the way? We've seen similar devices though. Does everyone remember the Ouya? And I'm not bashing it. I never had any interest in that machine. I don't, I don't like it. I play games on my mobile, on my iPad. I have a Samsung tab, uh, tab, tablet or whatever you want to call it. You know, I play them on there. My kids play them all the time. Hector, probably on uh, one of my kids, uh, Cal, he plays on his iPad way more than he plays on the PlayStation 3 or Xbox. They have an Xbox One, they have an Xbox 360, a Wii, all that. He's on his iPad all the time. I get the popularity of these games but is trying to sell and push another console, this home console thing, is it even working? Has it even worked for anyone? Other than the success of the Ouya on the Kickstarter, I don't hear many people talking about it. I don't see everyone going, oh man, best home console ever. The Ouya or whatever it is, the Ouija. I don't know, is that what it's actually called? Is it the Ouya? I think that's what it is. But I don't hear anyone talking about it. I don't see any, you know, on YouTube, not that this is an indicative of its success, but I don't see video gameplay. Believe me, if someone's going to record it, you know, and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to record it. Someone must be recording Ouya games or something like that. But I don't hear anyone saying, oh, it was the best thing ever. I'm so glad they made it. Is it still around? Like, if you, did you buy one? Are you, are you enjoying it? Or did you actually go, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Back to either PC gaming, my mobile gaming, or one of my consoles. I'd also like to know if any of you are actually interested in this. I mean, it is, uh, by the sounds of it, it looks like it's sort of focused on those Android type games. And if you're really big into that, maybe, just maybe, you might find this interesting. Maybe you like the console, but you like the games better. They're simple, they're addictive, and maybe actually sitting back on your couch on the big screen, that's something that appeals to you. Are any of you interested in this? I'd like to know that as well. So put that in the comments below, follow me on Twitter, and, and let me know. I need to know this because, I, you know, other than the Ouya, like, are people sick of this? And they don't know, hear about the Steam box, we see the Ouya, and now all of a sudden this. Is this something that anyone's still interested in, or are we all kind of like, yeah, uh, not really. It's not good. At a recent Spanish press conference, Sony confirmed its plans to unveil its new eSports League online for the PlayStation 4. It was scheduled to debut in Spain on October 16th, I believe, so I don't know if it's actually rolled out. If you're in Spain or anything like that and you're watching this, please let me know if you've heard anything about it. But they also have plans on rolling it out to both Portugal and Italy very, very soon. And as for the plans going outside of that, I don't know. Is this a test area? I haven't really heard much about this. This is the first article that we've seen. Obviously, it was in a press conference, but I would have thought if they had plans 
you know, for such a huge thing. I can't see them just saying, oh no, we just created for Spain. They're our biggest fans. You know what I mean? Maybe you are, I don't know. But I can't see them ignoring the rest of Europe, the rest of the world, not creating an esports league for the PlayStation 4 in North America either. But it seems like they're at least rolling it out here. I don't know how you guys feel about it. For me personally, I've always been a big supporter of competitive sports, even though I don't necessarily follow them. And the last time I was kind of quasi sort of involved in, and actually followed it and looked at that stuff was probably back in Modern Warfare 2. But I like the idea of it. I like the idea of something that I enjoy so much for entertainment is actually going to the next level. And then although, regardless as to whether or not they're actual real athletes, you know, that whole controversy is, is it esports or cyber athletes, actual athletes and all that stuff? I don't really care. The bottom line is video games is for entertainment. We play them to be entertained. And when other cyber athletes or whatever you want to call them are playing them competitively, it is essentially for our entertainment. They wouldn't exist, the league doesn't happen, if people weren't watching them because that's where the advertisement and everything comes in. We are the fuel, and because of that, it's a form of entertainment. It's no different than professional athletes. They're not saving the world. They're not, you know, rescuing orphans from a burning orphanage or anything like that. They're playing a game to entertain the people, the masses, and that's exactly what these cyber athletes are doing. I do have one slight concern, though, and if any of you know me, you know that, yes, I have an Xbox One. Yes, I don't play it anymore. And I am kind of a, a fan of PlayStation. I've been a fan of PlayStation since the PlayStation 1. I've had that one. I have several PlayStation 3s in my house. What I'm basically saying is I like Sony and I like their products. However, I don't feel exactly confident in Sony's ability to sustain a reputable and reliable eSports league. Let's face it, the PlayStation Network we're constantly hearing about it down. Whether or not it's, you know, said to be regular maintenance or whatever, scheduled maintenance, we know that it's got attacks. Remember the huge PSN outage in PlayStation 3? And I reported on that one as well, by the way, in the old gun shop. It was huge. And the reason behind it was outdated security, outdated encryption or whatever. And they almost got class action lawsuits out the wazoo because of that. Now, with the PlayStation 4, I know it's early, I get that. But we're not seeing near as many outages on the Xbox One. And don't say it's well because you have twice as many. There's millions and millions. If there's going to be an outage, there's going to be an outage. And whether or not it's hackers, oh, they only target PlayStation 4. I can't see that. Hackers are the cockroaches of the world, the cyber cockroaches, and they just go after wherever there's people. No different. But we don't see a lot of problems with the network on Xbox One. I'm concerned, unless Sony gets its act together, how reputable is an eSports league going to be on the PlayStation 4? And don't get me wrong, I'd actually support it. I'd like to see it. I think it would be fun. Heck, I may even do it if there's prizes. There's prizes for both team and individual. So, I mean, it would be fun. It would bring it for those that are interested in it. It would bring a whole new different ball game and level of excitement and entertainment to us that are on the PlayStation 4. But that PlayStation Network needs to be fixed. They need to do something and they need to concentrate on making it something that is reliable. Because right now, it kind of sucks. And last, but certainly not least, is the game Hatred, created by Destructive Creations, a Polish developer. This game is causing quite a stir in the gaming community right now. And before I get into talking about this game, I just want to give a little bit of a viewer discretion here. If you don't like, uh, like gratuitous violence or, you know, you know, really hearing about it, because I may, in the way I describe it or to get my opinion across, I usually use analogies and some of them may be a little, a little bit graphic. So just a little viewer discretion if you don't like that. And I'm going to put a link to their trailer of that video game as well in the description. Again, viewer discretion. If you're, you know, you, you don't like violence or you don't like anything like that, believe me, you do not want to click on that video. So hatred, what is it? I'm going to go over the premise of, uh, of the game and then kind of what the community seems to have reacted because it's almost splintered right in half. It's like 50-50, at least it was when I was looking at it. And I read through a lot of the comments to sort of get an idea of where people are coming from from both sides. The game itself basically uh, puts this... And I'm gonna, I, I, say, I say this because one of my Twitter followers actually described him this way. He's like, this is giving metalheads a bad name. He kind of looks like a metalhead. He looks, you know, like he's a heavy metal rocker or whatever. And it starts out and he's getting his big Bowie knife and he's got machine guns and he's like, I hate this world and blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to die, but I'm going to take as many people as I can out with me. And he's, 
And then it goes into the next scene, which this is what's causing the issue or the, or the, at least the, the argument here, this is what's causing quite a storm. Basically you go around and you kill innocent people. I say that because I don't actually know the full story, but from what we've seen, from what we know, and from the trailer, all of the people, the, the idea, the main objective of, of this game is to go around and just massacre as many people as possible. Not drug dealers, not soldiers from across the way, but just townspeople, people in schools, people in cafeterias, people in neighborhoods, innocent women and, and men and whatever, and you're just going up and you're just butchering the snot out of them. Now the controversy comes in and the, the community seems to be fractured here is that one side is like, listen, violence is violence. We see it, you know, why is this so bad in terms of, we say, oh, we shouldn't do that. Meanwhile, you can do the same thing in Grand Theft Auto. You can go in the game, you can run, mow down as many people as you want, shoot them all the time, it's in the game. So why is this so different? All right, I'm gonna share my opinion, but I wanted to note this uh, aspect of it first, just so that you're aware. And again, like I've mentioned previously, if you've ever seen any of my other previous uh, older videos, you'd know I'm not one of these people that says, violence is what causes you know these people to snap and these kids to snap and go and, you know, on a massacre and a real killing spree in real life. There's something wrong with these kids, whether it's a combination of some sort of, you know, some circuitry up in the old medulla oblongata that's gone bad in conjunction with horrible upbringing and a lack of parenting. And I'm not saying it's one or the other or more on this, but it could be a combination of both that's causing this. And simply playing a video game doesn't necessarily cause that. So you need to know, be aware of that. I'm not one of those people, and I'm certainly not trying to say that this is what's going to happen, you know, if you play this game. But listen, video gamers and games like this are constantly under fire. Over history, before video games were out, say heavy metal back in the 70s or, or yeah, probably the, around the 70s, it was the devil. It was the one being attacked. It was the reason why people were going out and killing other people because of the heavy, dark, you know, sadistic sounds that were coming from these record players. But now that video games is here, it is now, you know, the target of uh, religious and non-religious groups as to why there is violence, why these kids are snapping. It's the, vi you know, it's the video games that are doing it. I'm well aware of that. And what we don't need, what we don't need, because believe me, they're violent enough on their own, but what we don't need is a video game that pushes the limits because that's what this game does, at least for me, when I watched it, okay? Like, I mean, I shoot zombies' heads and I popped them off and I played all those games. I played Grand Theft Auto and I'm like, yeah, it's a video game. Yeah, I'm shooting people. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be, you know, run over that innocent woman in my car there, but I'm not like, mm. this game is a little bit different though. And we don't need something like this to, to fuel the fire. We don't need to hire more restrictions. The government's already coming down on everything. Look at Australia. You guys get hammered all the time with restrictions. Games that are like, you know, rated 14 or whatever, or 13 or whatever around here are rated R where you guys are. So strict, a game like this is not gonna be helping you guys at all, or any of us really. The other aspect that I wanna go into, because I see everyone talking about this in the actual comments, is they're saying, well, you do the same thing, you can do the same thing in Grand Theft Auto. There's a very big distinct, or there's a few distinct differences between that. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can run down those, those people and everything like that, but it is not the sole objective, it is not the primary objective. They are secondary things that can happen, and yes, some of us do it because we think it's funny, but it's not the premise of the game. It's not, oh no, 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 don't worry about the drug dealers and everyone else. You're gonna mow down and you're gonna kill all those innocent people. The other thing is that Grand Theft Auto is set up, it's more, it's more fantasy driven. I'm not saying that the, <laughs> the hatred isn't fantasy driven because it certainly is, hopefully is, it's not an account of something else because that's scary as crap. Although you can see how it would happen in real life. But the way it's set up is, it, it, it's meant to be more, you know, realistic. It's meant to be more frightful. It's meant to, uh, you know, capture that those real life scares. Like, look at the trailer if you haven't seen it. And don't tell me that they're not trying to put that image like it's like pure innocence. Like these people are scared for their lives. And the other thing is there's a huge difference in the levels of violence in, in terms of what you're actually doing there. You know, violence itself is probably inherently bad right? Because it causes suffering. I don't care who you are. You get slapped across the face. It's not nice. 
it's not good. You get shot, whether one side or the other, the act of violence is horrible. But in real life, in, our, in our, the way that society sort of accepts it, is there can be these good and bad representations of violence. Take for instance, you know, if someone, some piece of crap man beats the snot out of a, a woman, you know, we've seen that many a times, just because he has anger issues and beats the crap out of her. Not very good. But when we see a soldier, and let's just say from any of your country, I don't care wherever you are, and they're defending, and say there's a war, and it's a war that you believe is fighting for your protection, something maybe even inside your country, you're defending it, and the enemy's coming, and they're shooting those soldiers. That act of violence, although he is killing that person, and that person will suffer, and that person may have a, a, a family and everything like that, you condone you know, that, that act of violence. You say, oh, thank goodness, you praise him, he's a hero. So that act of violence is okay, the other one is not. There are differences in what you do. There is a moral compass, you know what I mean, that should trigger off. Like even if you're, you're looking at it, and I'm gonna say the game looks artistic, I like the style of it, but it could have easily been just as an amazing game if you said like, you know what, instead of just innocent people, that he's in a town and this town is like overrun with decrepit people, people are raping it, They're kind of like, uh, what's that, uh, the Book of Eli, you know, with Denzel Washington, everyone has just turned into a piece of crap and he is tired of it and he's gonna just go and assassinate everyone because they are lost. That I could sort of support a little bit more. This one here, where he's going into schools and massacring people, where he's shooting innocent people, my moral compass goes off and goes, that's not something that I find enjoyable. I can't sit there and go, oh, this is really fun. You know what I mean? I'm, this is the whole premise of it. I mean, I really enjoy this game because I get to kill innocent people. There should be a moral compass in you that goes off. And maybe you don't see that because of, you know, you don't see innocent, well, who's really innocent? Okay, well, let's, for instance, and, and people are saying, oh, you're being a hypocrite. You're saying this act of violence is bad, but then you can go and play in Grand Theft Auto. Again, like I said, differences. The setup, the one is dark and realistic. The one is the primary objective is to kill innocent people, whereas the other one is a secondary. You can happen. Yeah, I know, you can do it. And it's just, it, it's bad, but it's not the main focus on this. All right, so let's, let's take a look at this whole you're being a hypocrite thing. For the same people that are supporting it, if you're supporting a game like this and you're saying, whatever, violence is violence, blah, blah, blah. What if the game, because the game is clearly looking at going forward. It's looking at stepping over it and pushing those boundaries. Else everyone wouldn't be talking about it. They know what they're doing and they're doing a very good job. But say they said, okay, you know what? Let's go right to the limit. And you're saying, oh no, violence is violence. I don't have a problem with this game. What if they go to the extreme? What if they add, and this is where I'm gonna get a little graphic. So for those of you that, you know, this is the viewer discretion part, and this is an analogy I thought of. What if the game also included additional uh, abilities? So we're talking about slaughtering and just punishing people. What if he raped women? violently raped women, that was part of the gameplay, then killed them. What if there was children and babies involved in this? And I'm talking, uh, babies and children are sort of like the, the quintessential example of innocence, pure, unadulterated innocence. You know, especially a baby. A baby hasn't done anything wrong. It's, it's what you know, we teach them as adults. It's what we put into their minds that makes them you know, either moral and just or, you know, whatever, a little piece of crap that's gonna go around shooting people. But what happens if that was in it? And part of it was going into hospitals and finding them and, and doing, think of the worst thing that you could possibly think of of, this, of a violent pedophile, a violent murdering pedophile. And that's what you had to do in the game. Would you still have no problem with it? Would you still say, ah, oh, it's just a game, it's just violence. It's human being, it's, you know, it's, it's a baby, it's a different age, but it's a human being, it's still an act of violence. Would you have an issue with that? Would that cause a problem for you? Because if for those of you saying violence is violence, well, what's the difference? You have a baby and a child there. And to that I say, for those of you that are about to say, it is nothing, I have no problems doing that. I think you are seriously sick in the head. And I, and I say that. I say that because there's got to be something morally wrong with you. Either your moral compass is broken or you just don't have one. Because that thought to me, if I was to even see a, a, a game where I had to do that to a baby or a child, would make me sick to my stomach. And I would hope that some of you out there can see that. And those that even if you support that, you're like, yeah, okay, that's a little bit too far. That's all I'm looking for. That you do have a, a moral compass. That you can distinguish and say, you know what, I get it. 
maybe it's not to that extent. Maybe hatred isn't that, that bad. But at least own up to the fact that there are levels of violence. There are levels of morality and that certain acts of violence are a little bit sicker than others. You know what I mean? In terms of violence in video games, I don't have an issue with it. But there are certain things that make me, where my moral compass goes off and says, no, that's not right. I don't know. That's just me. I'm just sharing my opinion. Heck, I don't care. If you want to go out and buy it, I'm not going to judge you. I don't really care. If you, <laughs> you do whatever you want. But for me, when I saw that, I was like, no, man, that's not something I'm interested in. That's not something I would find enjoyable at all. Well, that's just mine. I'm very curious to know your opinions on this. Follow me on Twitter. That link is uh, in the description below, and I will be watching my Twitter feed. You guys have been awesome. I, you know, all the other ones, when I told you to tweet me, Man, you guys are just, you're giving me so much in there. And I was like, it's a good read for me. I like reading it. You may like reading other people's tweets. I like reading yours as well, especially when I'm asking for it and you're giving me because I can't read your minds. So remember, and just be polite. Please don't go off. Like, let's be civil about this. If you disagree with my opinion, if you know, you don't see it the way I do, that's fine, understandable. I'm not telling you that your opinion's wrong. We each have them. Just be civil in the comments. Let's not be, you know, jerks to each other. All right? Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. This one was... It was a hard one. I was not, I was almost not going to cover that last one. I'm like, that's too controversial, but why? Why not talk about this stuff? We both have opinions about this, so why not share them and have a civil conversation about them? Hope you guys enjoyed today's gun shop. I enjoyed it. I was a bit nervous about doing it, but hey, you know, it's the gun shop. It's what we do here. It's what I do here. I'll see you guys next time.